Hello everyone, Tony Richardson here with ToddExpert.com and today I'm really excited to show you this amazing dramatic photo effect. It's called the Dragon Effect, D-R-A-G-A-N and it's actually named after a Polish physicist who did some work in optics in the optics field and I assume that that led him into uh, dealing with photography of some sort because he's accredited with um, originally starting this effect and recently it's just taken off uh, like wildfire if you look at this original photo um, it's just a simple image I downloaded a royalty free image from stockexchange.com and I'll put a link there you can follow right along um, I have Photoshop CS6 but through a series of, of layer adjustments and a couple of unique filters and tricks um, we can get this effect and it's it's easy to follow along just basically take your original image uh, duplicate it so that you have the original image unedited in case you do mess up or uh, do something that you need to adjust later you have uh, the information is not destroyed so we're gonna start off with a black and white filter so just go to layer adjustments and black and white not filter I'm sorry layer adjustment I want to click OK. Now it looks like it took all the color information out, but it actually didn't. There's still, um, you see, red 40, yellow 60. So we want all that to be zero, all the way down to the magenta. So the white, you can either type in zero, but I happen to know that this preset, maximum black, does that for you. And one thing I've noticed um, with this is that it takes all the information out of his eyes, out of the entire image. So we'll drop the opacity down to 65%. And that brings up a look, uh, that brings up the rest of the image, but not the eyes. So I'm actually going to mask that off. And if you've never worked with mask, uh, I do have a tutorial that explains what they do. And uh, this is a perfect example. I don't know if you can hear that, but my computer's dinging every time I change the brush size. So uh, that's not intentional. Um, so I'm going to mask off his eyes here, and that should should do it okay so I want I want to have those eyes really pop in this image um, I think it speaks volumes for this particular style we're going to add another adjustment layer here levels and that's going to be above the black and white adjustment layer we're going to bring this up to about 20 uh, I think I'm going to leave the white even though you know the histogram says start here a lot of people will pull that into right there but I think I'm going to leave it because it's, it's just going to have some high contrast anyway and I want all that information there as much as possible. So I'm just going to bring this in to about 1.2. Um, not a big adjustment, if you see, but enough that we're starting the process. And we're going to duplicate that. And now, what a lot of people don't know is you can take an adjustment layer and you can apply blending modes to your adjustment layer. So I'm going to apply the overlay mode. And as you see, it, it just changed it dramatically, but kind of took all the information out of this left side. So. We'll go try our mask once again. We'll grab our brush tool and I'll increase the brush size uh, and we'll paint on the mask, not the image, the mask, and we'll tell it to hide this area right here. So that's pretty good. So now I can see the left side of his face still. And I want to duplicate all this information. So I'll go to uh, Control Alt or Command Option Shift E. So you could select all these layers, duplicate them, and do Control or Command E uh, to merge them. But that little trick, when you hold Control, Alt, or Command Option at the same time pressing Shift and E, it'll take all the visible layers and merge them into one. We're going to want to take a filter here, apply the, a filter, a sharpen filter. So I go to Smart Sharpen. I like this one. It's got a lot of power. Um, if you go with the basics that's probably good enough for a photo like this but you can get in the advanced area and go into the shadows into the highlights and really get some good contrast now I've already done this so it's set at 150 and 10.5 and I think actually I wanted a little more I think I wanted it somewhere close to 13 uh, maybe even 14 I think 14 was my limit so if you click on this you can see that's before and that's after before and after and it's got some good contrast there so that's what I'm looking I'm looking to start that 
to get these highlights in, in the hair and the tonal changes in the skin. You want all the freckles, all the, all the little changes in the skin color to, to come out in these type of effects. So let's let this uh, process go through and there we go. Now, okay, um, I probably want to take this layer and duplicate it and a lot of times I will change the blending mode. I'll start at darken and see sometimes it'll darken right around the eyes. That doesn't seem to be a very dramatic change there. So let's go to something like hard light. Okay, that's dramatic. That's a little too dramatic. So we'll drop the opacity down, maybe uh, 50%, um, something like that. Yeah, and then we'll probably want to put a levels adjustment on top of that. I'll, um, I'll apply a clipping mask because it's just going to be to that layer and that layer only. Um, and I'll go to the mask first before I do anything and I'll mask off this area right here okay and now let's uh, go back to the adjustment layer and let's pull in some of these mid-tones yeah there we go. can we get that I just want a little bit of these to start coming in so I'll bring the white right up to where the histogram starts, go back in the mask, and I'll switch to white, and I'll start painting over some of these areas. Um, actually, we only want it on the one, so I better put black here, right there. I don't want it. I don't want it there. I don't want it here at all. But I do want it in the center right here. So, do something like that. And that's not too, too bad. There we go. Okay. So, um, that's that's the 100% uh, or 0% opacity. And then we can bring it up just a bit. Something like that. Um, so, it's not too, too bad. There we go. So, we're getting it. We're not affecting it too much. We still got some good contrast here. Um, and the hard light layer. Uh, we can bring that we can bring that uh, opacity down to maybe 35 even all right so that's looking pretty good right there um, one thing we're probably going to want to do is grab this this entire everything that's visible once again and merge them into a single layer which that's not what I wanted to do uh, control <laughs> alt or command option shift e and there we go I was on the wrong layer you want to be on the top layer when you do that alright so now I can shut all these off and we have this top layer here that we can apply a high pass filter to so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate it um, apply a filter other high pass and I do the same thing with this I start at zero and I start bringing it up a bit and I think it was seven I I was at. Um, no, this one's going pretty far here. I don't want to go too far. Yeah, that might be too far. So start again. Uh, somewhere nine-ish. Yeah, nine looks about it. All right. So we'll click nine, and then we need to put. Um, we need to find the right overlay. So we could do hard light. Um, and here's one thing you want to do is just kind of cycle through some of these so you can start at normal and just keep going down there's darken there's a couple of these linear burns none of these really work until you get past screen so color dodge is nice um, a few of those don't work overlays okay soft light but I think hard light is really the best for this so we'll stick with hard light uh, we can drop the opacity down just a bit because um, uh, somewhere around 60 60 somewhere in there so it's not too too dramatic and then once again I'm gonna grab everything that's visible and I'm going to duplicate it again and I'm going to take this layer um, and duplicate it yet again but only in a new document so we'll click OK I'm going to go to image adjustment HDR toning 
and it's asking if I want to flatten it and yes because we got to proceed but um, one is there's no other layer so there's nothing really to flatten um, now they've got a lot of lot of adjustments in here that you could tweak through but they have a really good preset called monochromatic artistic and that's really really nice right there uh, we can darken this up a little bit here um, you can uh, run through a few of these filters yourself uh, I think I'm going to darken it even a little bit more uh, there we go or presets yourself and kind of check them out monochromatic artistic then there's just straight monochromatic high pass and monochromatic now we're going to duplicate this but we're going to go back to our original image so we're going to go back there now it's talking about the color profiles don't match don't worry about that um, uh, that's not going to matter in this particular instance now we have our our uh, high pass another type of high pass kind of filter uh, except with way more detail um, HDR uh, information in there so we probably want to leave that if we're going to use it more than once uh, so what I mean by that is we're going to duplicate it and I'm going to shut off this top layer but this bottom layer I'm going to find a blending mode that fits and I think vivid light was one that worked pretty good um, maybe uh, even hard light right there yeah that one probably is not the one because of the uh, issue with the, the skin right here now we're going to drop the opacity down quite a bit and we're going to start from the bottom and bring it up so maybe somewhere around 20 now I'm going to go back to this top layer I'm going to switch it to I'm just going to be at normal but I'm going to filter blur and then Gaussian blur uh, yeah I want to get a good blur on it and then I'm going to change that to soft light and there we go yeah that just softens the image up just a bit there so we could drop the opacity down about 50% on that one too okay and that's about it I'll just actually type in 50 there so that's how you get this dragon effect and I know there's a lot of steps but you know it's basically going to be um, the same steps for any image you're just gonna have to play with your levels adjustments and you're gonna have to worry about these masks uh, for your levels on areas that get a little too dark but just a wonderful effect if you're on the site go ahead and check out another tutorial or article if you're on YouTube go ahead and watch another video and get you some knowledge